Hello, my name is Sam Burb and I'm a junior solutions architect here at Red Hat. And what I'm going to be doing today, I'll be going over role based access control. And what I'll show you, I'll show you how you can manage users and groups using role based access control. But before I get started, I think it's important to understand you know, role based access control in OpenShift. Pardon. So in OpenShift, um, there are two levels or two type or two types of roles that can be um, that can be used depending on the user's um, level of responsibility um, and those are class role so with a class role is a user or a group with this role can manage the OpenShift cluster and the local role which is anyone with this role can only manage elements at a project level in OpenShift um, it comes with a set of default cluster roles that can be assigned locally or the entire clusters. Um, you can modify these roles for fa for um, fine grained access control to shift resource. So in OpenShift, you have um, you know some of the roles that you'd see will be like the admin role, and with the admin role, it means basically this user um, has access to project resources such as quarters limits ranges and has the ability to create a new application and also they can manage you know not only manage all project resources but they can grant access to others um, to other users to access the project you've got your basic user and basically this user has a role to you know to have read access to the project and you have your cluster admin and your cluster admin you know less they're they're like a super user right they, they can perform um, any action on the cluster and have full control of all the pro projects. And then you've got your edit role. So the edit role gives a user sufficient access to act as a developer inside the project, but working under constraints configured by project administrator. So they can create, change, and delete common application resources. But you know what they cannot do is act on management resources such as limit ranges and quarters or cannot manage access permissions to the project. And then you've got your self-provisioners. So with the self-provisioners, um, basically this is a class of role, not a project role. And with this, it just gives, um, grants the user access to be able to create new um, new projects. And then you've got your view role. So with the view role is, you know, users can can view projects, but cannot modify project resources as well. You know, the reasons to have roles is, of course, is very important, right? You might have, you know, two users. You want one user to be able to um, create new applications, and you just want another user to be able just to view and not modify anything. And uh, you know, that's that's important in in any, any in any workplace that, um, that you're working. You don't want everyone to have full access, right? So you know, let's get ahead or let's go on OpenShift and see what we can do with role-based access control. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, let's create a project. We're going to call this project test project. Let's see. Right now that we've created test project, as you can see in test project, there is no, um, now there's some role bindings, but you don't have, um, you know, citing users to it. So we have, we have two users. We've got user demo, um, user demo 36 and demo user 40 and what we're gonna do is we're gonna give demo user 36 the we're gonna give demo that user 36 the edit role and we're gonna give demo for um, user 40 the um, the view role and then what we're gonna do we're gonna create application and we'll be able to see how view and edit works so let's go and demo user 40 role bindings Let's create a binding, and as you can see, you've got two ty um, two types of bindings, right? You've got your cluster role and your local role. You know, with the namespace in role, it just grants the permission to a user within that selected namespace. Or if you want, you can give grant access um, to the whole cluster and all lem uh, and, and all namespaces. So the role binding name will be um, is this is this if this is the thirty six will be edit. Let's namespace. Let's do test project role edit Ugh, 
some at the bottom. Oh, it's right here. And let's do create. So you know that's one way of you know creating a role binding. The other way of creating a role binding is if you actually go to role bindings itself, and you create, you know, you do create. And um, you know, as I was already in, you know, um, test projects, it. Um, I mean, you know, I can be able to create there. I don't need to choose whether it's um, whether it's a local or the cluster. So this um, role band name will be view. Role name view. View view view. User demo user forty. So you know, when I was in users. Um, in the user tab right out, I didn't need to put in the subject name, but since I'm in the role bindings tab, you know you have to kind of specify what user you're using. So that's demo user forty. Now that's created. What we can see right now is if I clicked on here, we able to see you know demo user thirty six has the edit role, and demo user forty has the view role. So now let's go and create an application. Um, let's first log in. Let's get this in the URI. Um, there we go. Let's see. You know, let's do this actually. Okay, cool. So, I'll see. Log in. Demo user 36. Yeah, let's do demo user 36. Um, NSP right up near the end of this. On it. Um, and now let's create a project. Um, let's do just a simple project app. Let's call it test simple HTTPD. And as you can see, it creates is creating my project, uh, my application, and the application is running. So um, now let's switch over to demo user forty with the um, with the view role and see if we're able to create an application. And if we're not able to create an application, we should be able to view the application. So demo user forty. Now let's view the application. Get pods. Minus. As you can see, we already have you know the test pod the test pod um, working. What we're gonna do now is let's try delete the pod. OC delete oh, when it's yeah, OC. OC delete pod. Let's see if we're able to delete this pod, and it should not work because, as you can see, the use demo is already cannot delete resources. You know, like I said, with um, with the view role, they can only view project resources, but cannot modify those resources. And if you know, let's go and step ahead and try create another, um, and try create another new pro a new pro application. As a new app name test two test one actually HTTPD. And what that should do, that should fail. As you can see, it's failed at the bottom as they are forbidden as they do not have so now what we're going to do now is let's go back to um, demo user 40 and give demo user 40 a different role let's delete this the view role first and let's give um let's give him um the view um let's Give to, to what should we give? Should we give him a super access role that you know cluster admin, or should we just be able to let's just do it? Let's give him the edit because why not? You know, we're gonna be able to see if edit namespace is test project select role edit edit create. And now let's go back to let's see. Yep. 
let's go back to a terminal and last now delete the port let's clear this and if we do SC get pods we shouldn't have anything so yes as you can see we, we was able to delete the port and okay let's get pods here we go Boom. Copy. We'll see. Delete. Pods. Well, not you know, no shift when you delete pod E really by itself. So boom. As you can see, you're able. You know, with demo user forty, I believe you can be able to um delete the pod as well. So now that I've showed you how to um um delete um you know just to manage um users using um you know with um with roles now let's go take it one step forward um further and let's you know let's do groups now before we do that let's you know as a uh, as the use demo user 40 has um the edit role let's see if we can you know we should be let's change it to um let's be able to maybe let's try see if we can what can we do let's see if we can um you know change some access permissions to the projects right so if i or you know let's just you now try to change something or let's say delete a project for instance as it will say delete project and as you can see Demo user 40 is not permitted to you to delete the project, right? Because um, with demo user 40, they only have the edit, and like I said, they can can they can create, change, you know, with the edit role, you can create, change, delete common applications from from projects, right? But you cannot um, manage access permissions to projects, and that's one of the things. So now let's 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 add groups and put demo and remove um and remove the bindings from the users itself because sometimes you know you might have a group of um, you know a group of developers or a group of yeah a group of developers collaborating together working together and you know you have one group that you know they just they should be able to um edit and you and you have one group that should just be able to view right so let's go ahead and do that let's delete this delete let's go to groups now let's create a group um to do that we can do this let's do group right um let's call this group uh, let's call this group um group one let's yeah let's stay let's be, stay original group one and we're gonna use we're gonna leave demo user one in this group demo user 36 so um group one has demo user 36 and group one does have has no role bindings um now let's get a second group group two Let's put demo user 40. Demo user 40. And if I was, let me, and as you can see, has no, but. So let's log in into, um, let's log in as an admin, and you can be able to see the groups. Let's do OC get groups. And as you can see, group one has demo user 36 and group two has demo user 30, um, 40. So what I'm gonna do now in group one, we're gonna give group one, let's let's make this our developer um, group, right? Let's create a binding. And with this, we're gonna create a cluster wide role. Or should we do that? Yeah, no, let's create a cluster wide role. And we're gonna call this role. So, you know, with a cluster wide role, you can be able to manage, you know, you can be able to do pretty much 
quite quite a bit, you know, with within the class level and all name traces. And let's give um the edit role. Just cause why not? Yeah, or should I give it a cluster? Um should I give it admin role? Just basic user. Well we want uh yeah, let's give it a let's just give it a edit role. One edit cluster wide, and then let's go back to um, groups. Group two, we'll just give this the basic, basic, um, you know, and to make it fair, let's just give it in a cluster world, world binding as well. Um, and we're gonna give this um, role, uh, let's do view. And now, you know, now let's see if, now let's log in with the demo user 36 and see if we can be able to, you know, create, create projects. Let's go and try and log in with demo user 36 as a group. Now demo user 36 is in um, group, group one and that's a developer. So we can be able to create, um, you know, new applications. You can be able to do anything. It's within the whole cluster. All right, OC, create new. Oh, see new app. Sorry, I see new app name. Test two. I love that simple HBTD. And as you can see, with um, you know, Demo Thirty Six is able to create um, a, a, a new application just because as you can see right here, right? We've got test two, and because they're in gr the, a group in which you they have their um, the edit role. If I was to go to demo 36 and I did role bindings, you can see there is no role bindings, right? But they're in a group. And now let's do the same with um, with demo user 40. Now let's log in. <clears throat> and let's do the same. I'll see. Get pods. I'm going to do that. So you can do you see that. Let's see. We'll see. Let's try create a new board up. Um, name. Test two. Test three. Test four. HBTD. And as you can see, that is forbidden. And you know, and that's the you know that's the beauty of role based access. You can. You can have um, your developers, or you can have you can have you know project administrators just you know working together in a group, collaborating, and you can um, put them you know in groups, and you know, and the group has a specific access to you know certain projects, um, and you can, like I said earlier, you can you know you can modify these roles for fine grained access control you know to shift resources and in a nutshell that is role based access control so if you have any questions please leave a message and you know we'll get back to you and you know keep sharing this video and and you know please watch for more videos bye